as you can see, we're once again talking about some PS3 games. Coming back through the big, thick list of them that I had found um, over in uh, in a box randomly in the house, uh, which I managed to find as we were packing up. Uh, so today we're going to be chewing some gum. We're going to be going through a new pack here um, that I haven't had in a very, very long time, uh, which is the apple flavour extra gum. Love me a bit of that. Uh, so I'm going to be chewing a bit of that. We're going to talk about some of the games um, and just go through them again. So let's get the, the gum open up because I haven't opened it up yet. And get a couple of pieces out. I can't remember what this tastes like, but I imagine it's going to be apple flavoured. <laughs> oh yeah. Rich sour apple flavour. specific order I'm going for. Um, I'm just going to go through them. So first off the bat is Assassin's Creed, the original, the first with Octayer. So I was, I don't really know how to describe this. I was late to the party, so to speak. Assassin's Creed. Um, I know my PS3 after a lot of other people didn't already play through it. I think Assassin's Creed 2 had already come out by the time I played this. Don't really remember, but when I played through this, absolutely loved it. Loved the idea. Obviously, it's expanded so much now, but really, like everything that Assassin's Creed is, is because of this game. It was just such like a crazy new sort of game, proper stealth game, um, which obviously in hindsight there are a lot of like, okay that could be better now, features like quality of life and like just game design, but generally speaking, pretty good, it's got a few marks here and there, that's the first one, then Ubisoft to get of course, back when Ubisoft felt like an actual game company doing good games. Up next, we have what's argued as being the best Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed to do with Ezio going through his life cycle from birth all the way to being a master assassin. I love Assassin's Creed 2 so much. Incredible story. Just like visually, it was really great. You know, obviously, in comparison to like graphics now, okay, it's not, but like at the time, but in the in the product of its time, um, it was stunning. Like the story, the missions themselves, the stealth was improved. The, the questing and the game world was massively like um, expanded, and uh, yeah, just visually as well. Like in terms of the costume being able to change that up different location I mean obviously Assassin's Creed had different locations but it felt a little bit more like expanded and uh, you could go to Venice this game interestingly um, I went on a uh, holiday with some family a long time ago now this game is the reason that we went there was because I played Assassin's Creed 2 and I wanted to go to Venice and we did which is pretty cool I'm actually going to pop another piece in because I don't feel like I'm getting a satisfying chew next on the list it's a game that I love I feel like the 
sneak in and like poison them or drop a chandelier on their head. The, the options are basically not really endless, but there's like a whole bunch, you know. And there's like fun challenge modes as well. I don't know if that's in this game or not, probably though. I don't think it is the first of Hitman game though. Um, just based on the story, it, it didn't really feel that way. But there you go, Hitman. I really enjoyed playing that. Um, and I think I did eventually finish the story mode. We talked about Skyrim in the last game. But today we're talking about a different Elder Scrolls, and that is Oblivion. So, I have Oblivion, much like Skyrim, both on PlayStation 3 and also on PC. The PC version that is the game of the year, and I picked that up from a charity shop. This one is just the base game. Um, I don't remember how far I got in this. But I did play it for very long on the PlayStation 3. I just felt it kind of sucked a little bit when I was playing on PlayStation 3. I can't lie. But going from Skyrim back, it can be quite difficult. But I much prefer playing it on PC when I did play it. That was a lot more fun. But yeah, great game. Still. You know, it's not perfect. You've got the old famous of like um, that voice actress having to redo her line and they accidentally kept that in the game or just the face models which are just laughable but ultimately it's a game with a lot of heart um, and I'd love to see this game like properly brought back as well I think it would be really good if it, if it had a remaster or they could just focus on getting another damn game out you know so there we have it. Oblivion. Not my favourite Elder Scrolls game, but a fun one. I actually preferred Morrowind to this. Personally, but I don't have Morrowind on here because it wasn't on console as far as I remember. Pretty sure it was only on a PC. But I do have a big chunky box set, which I also got from a charity shop. For like a few pounds, if that. Okay, next we've got kind of like a trademark of um, of the PlayStation, and we've not seen another game of this for a long time. But it is Little Big Planet, the first one. Man, do you remember Little Big Planet? Such a fun game, like Sackboy here. Yeah. You play as and go like through levels. It's basically like a parkour, not parkour, but you know what I mean, like um side scroller level jumper I don't know what the term for these are now but that sort of game um yeah big love for that game there were obviously other versions as well or two and three don't know if there are any more of that but yeah just like fun because you can make your levels and like share them and do other people's levels I'd love to see another little bit planet that would be a lot of fun See it kind of updated, but yeah, prototype. This game was basically like um, B list, uh, like B list. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Infamous, infamous, but not infamous. But you had like some kind of like parasite or something, I think gave you special abilities but it was like much more like adult I guess than infamous um, and like darker I don't really remember if it had like a morality system or not but like it had the same thing of being kind of like a pseudo superhero like you're an anti-hero um, uh, transform your limbs into claws blades hammers and whips arm your body um, or use advanced sensory powers yeah, it was basically like a superhero game, but like not a superhero in the same way that Infamous existed, you know. So, that's Prototype. I never really played a whole bunch of it. I played it quite, you know, I would say a fair amount of it. I don't think I ever finished the game. I kind of just preferred playing Infamous, really. So, that's that game. I never really finished it. Not much more to say on that. But like a product of its 
time in terms of the quality of the game. Uh, next we've got another FPS skill zone 2. Another like, I think it's like Sony specific game skill zone. I played a few missions of this and then I remember there being a point where you needed to use the dual shock like movement and I had a third party controller um, and yeah, I just couldn't finish it so that was the end of that my experience I played like two missions if that um, but then I had to use it so I barely played this game um, I've been tempted to, to download um, one of the newer Killzone games that's on PlayStation Plus and play through it because you know I really wanted to play it but it's basically an FPS game Sony and I don't really know anything else about it like what the what the tone of it is like is it meant to be like I don't know sci-fi-esque <laughs> I don't know talking of DualShock controllers luckily I had um, luckily well I didn't actually have one but Ratchet & Clank Tools of Destruction my first ever Ratchet & Clank game I never played any of the others um, this was the first one, and I absolutely loved it, fell in love with it, played it through time and time and time and time again. Just absolutely thought it was incredible. Um, I enjoyed the newer one that came out with PS5 with, uh, when Insomniac made that. Of course, it's made by Insomniac. Um, great series, great game. Uh, this also has like a jaw shock movement thing in it, but luckily it's not like permadeath if you don't do it um or like when i say permadeath i mean like you can't continue like a soft basically a well not just a soft lock a hard lock you can't move past the game um i also had that experience with ghost of tsushima as well when i played it on playstation 4 um there's a mission where you have to use the pad and i didn't i had a third party controller again um so i was kind of fucked a little bit but <laughs> anyway um i managed to get past that and this way you just hit a bunch of stuff, it's like you're falling down, you have to use it to move out of the way. Fortunately I just hit into everything. Um, but the game itself is a lot of fun, all the different kinds of tools, fun story going between different worlds. I mean it's not like the most like dark and like deep emotional story, but it's not really designed to be, it's more of like an arcade game with a, with a, with a plot. It's camp, it's goofy, I love it. Um, and the weapons are just fun to play with, you know. Like, you just want to shoot out, like, like throw a little robot in the air that helps you whilst you shoot out slime and then pull out a rocket launcher. Fun. Uh, the next game, I guess, falls under the same sort of line of, like, um, uh, like, Red Faction, like, Resistance games, and that is uh, Sabado. So the whole premise of this game is that you are French Resistance, I'm pretty sure, during a particular period of time, um, by like defeating the Germans in Paris. I didn't really mess with it too much. I played a bit of it, and I don't know, I kind of got bored of it. I just felt like I'd prefer playing anything else at the time, you know? So I stopped playing it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know, I just didn't really, really enjoy it. Um, I'm, I'm happy to say that's you know, possibly personal preference. Interestingly, it says 1080p on there. Interesting, because other games that came out later don't have that. Ratchet and Clank doesn't. Came out a year before Killzone. The same year it seems. Maybe uh, all of these don't have um, 1080p, but interestingly, this one does. Anyway, that's um, Saboteur. Kind of a bit of like a, a meh game, in my opinion. Um, but if I had the chance, I'd maybe go back, try it again, and see, see if it was any different now. Alright, I want to push through some of these other games. Next one, we've got Heavy Rain. Um, what's it called? Quantic 
Oh yeah, Quantic Dream. So I think this is the same company that also did um, Beyond Two Souls and um, Detroit, I want to say, but I'm not too sure. The whole premise of this game is, is like a story, every, every story driven game, mostly like walk your avatar through like a room, find clues, um, and then mostly quick time events that like impact the story. The whole premise of this is that you're trying to find your son who's been kidnapped and it has so many different branches. I didn't really play a whole bunch of it. Um, I just didn't really kind of get in the mindset to play it, but I'd love to play it through again now um, as an adult with more of a mentality to actually play it. So I don't really have much more to say on it than I love the style of the game. Two more. We talked about it. And here it is, Infamous. This is the first one. Um, I played all three, question mark, maybe four. Um, three and a half, probably. Infamous games. I think they're a lot of fun. Um, super love like the morality system. Playing as like a, a superhero, not a superhero, or a person with powers in a world where they've only just existed is really cool. Um, I think like the, the world building of it is a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. And I would love to, to see another game of this as well in the future. Um, if you love a superhero game that isn't like Marvel or DC, you should be playing this if you haven't already. Um, I'd love to go back and play it again. Um, and I might do so. Oh, and that's by Sucker Punch. Oh, same company that did Tsushima. Interesting. I actually didn't know that. I feel like I knew that when Ghost of Tsushima was coming out, but I completely forgot about that. That explains why Ghost of Tsushima is so good. And finally, the last game, Battlefield 3. Not really a fun one to, to uh, end on like last time. I enjoy the Battlefield 3 games. Well, I enjoy the Battlefield games more than I do. God, I don't know why. I just always have preferred them. Um, I enjoy playing the story of those kind of games more than the multiplayer. But I prefer the Battlefield multiplayer because it feels more like... I don't know, it feels like it's like running around a single arena shooting each other. Or at least it used to not feel like that. Um, like as a single player. Um, and more of like a what I would experience in something like Planet Side, if you know what that game is, where like you're actually doing a battle. Man, I'd love there to be a new Planet Side game. Like if they really like put all the stops out, that would be awesome if there was another Planet Side game, because that game, at its core, is a lot of fun, um, and a really interesting take on putting a fir first-person shooter in like a single server and having like hundreds of players that would be so awesome to see but there we have it those are the game oh god the games we have to talk about today i hope you enjoyed um if you like the video drop a little like if you want to subscribe i would appreciate it drop a subscribe hit the subscribe button whatever the thing is to say um check out some of the videos appearing on the side and i'll see you in whatever video comes next have a wonderful morning